Our universe is boundless, with seemingly no end. There are countless star systems and planets to probe, but they are so far away that the distance it would take to disembark would often transcend a human lifespan, therefore rejecting the idea or thought of even trying. What if we could travel at the speed of light or supersonic speed? Is it possible that Elon Musk and NASA have finally defied the laws of physics with their latest development? Perhaps they have, because NASA is on the verge of developing a near light speed engine that defies physics laws, a concept for an engine that can accelerate to 99% of the speed of light while consuming no fuel. That may sound like something out of a science fiction movie, but it isn't, because Elon Musk just revealed the new light speed engine. Ever wondered just how great it would be if it were even possible? Well, stay tuned as we talk about the new light speed engine just revealed by Elon Musk. The term light is undoubtedly fast. It is the fastest thing that exists. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second and can go from the Earth to the Moon in just over a second. Light can streak from Los Angeles to New York in less than the blink of an eye. While 1% of anything doesn't sound like much, with light, that's still really fast, close to 7 million miles per hour. At 1% of the speed of light, it would take a little over a second to get from Los Angeles to New York. This is more than 10,000 times faster than a commercial jet. If we can achieve this speed, then a new era of space travel has begun. The speed of light is primarily used as the preferred unit to measure distance in space. To be clear, the speed of light is estimated to be 299,792,458 meters per second, a speed that seems only possible in Star Wars, but might come to reality. Amazing, right? That's true, but it gets even better. You may ask, why? It's because this engine wouldn't even need propellant to do this. Elon Musk announced his crazy plan, part of which entails carefully scrutinized schematics, entailing how he intends to design a supersonic interplanetary spacecraft charged with the sole purpose of carrying about 1 million people to Mars before 2050. The success of Musk's plan depends entirely on the perfection of the key technology of the interstellar spacecraft. For this reason, he supervised the development of the interstellar spacecraft. To achieve this goal, you need a reliable rocket fleet. Each ready-made interstellar spacecraft will have the ability to transport 100 tons of cargo or 100 people at a time. If you only have dozens of interstellar spacecraft, it will take a long time to transport a large number of people and equipment, but it is very difficult to implement. The billionaire and the long-lasting house company need to take folks to locations in deep space. While the two have different reasons for the need, they both face the same distance limitation, which makes it difficult to build a successful spacecraft. To beat this limitation of getting sufficient gasoline for space travel, NASA and Musk's firm, SpaceX, have revealed a revolutionary technique of propulsion that keeps rockets going endlessly and ever into deep space. Some scientific research teams in the United States have a proposal to design a near light speed engine to bring a key breakthrough for human aerospace, but this requires a huge investment. When NASA analyzed its proposal, the power companies competed with it. All teams have various technologies, but these technologies are considered low level, especially the propulsion system of the national team. There were multiple propulsion systems at the time, but none of them had been properly developed. SpaceX has at least their Raptor propulsion systems, and they are actually in operation. They sometimes get involved in the huge mud, but it doesn't get in the way. The design is not radical, but if you look at it, you can see that the pipeline layout has changed. Some manifold designs have been recast. Hopefully, this will improve their reliability. Moreover, the US national team noticed them, and there was also a bid that did not meet the requirements. The bid said that it was part of the proposal, and the requirement was that no advance payment could be made for unfinished work. The major challenging haunting SpaceX is that they were on halt in order to search for a valid, systematic, and applicable solution to efficiently refuel the interplanetary starship. It will take about six flights to reach orbit and completely refuel the spacecraft. But the advantage of this is that all these refueling processes need to be carried out in low Earth orbit. If there is a problem, they will have time to adjust their schedule, which is a relatively easy goal. But their design is to launch the lander to the moon, and then they will be assembled and refueled in lunar orbit. This, of course, requires fewer launches, but it is not in low Earth orbit. But I think the biggest factor is that, even though SpaceX has this monster lander, it is the cheapest and most affordable. This is largely because space exploration technology companies are already using their own money and other investors to develop it because they have specific missions, not only interstellar spacecraft, but also general super heavy spacecraft. Not only would this light speed engine need to be fast, consuming a significant amount of fuel, 
but it would also need to be able to conserve enough energy to last for years. While a fuelless engine is not an entirely new concept, previous attempts at such machines have been made. In the late 1970s, a US inventor named Robert Cook patented an engine that converted centrifugal force into linear motion. In the early 2000s, a British inventor named Roger Sawyer proposed, claiming to convert trapped microwaves into thrust. The M-Drive, in particular, was dubbed the impossible engine because it is essentially a container with microwaves bouncing around inside it, supposedly moving due to these bouncy microwaves. Nobody truly understands how it's meant to function, since the explanations go beyond our present knowledge of physics. Well, this is where things get a little tricky. Consider putting a ring in a box that bounces while recoiling in the other direction. When the ring within the box reaches the end, springing backward, the recoil direction of the box is also modified. The box would wiggle back and forth in normal circumstances, but because both the box and the ring are traveling at the speed of light, by the time the ring reaches the end of the box, its mass will have increased as it travels faster while bouncing back, resulting in forward momentum. While this engine would not require propellant, it would necessitate the use of particle accelerators as well as ion particles. The spaceship is supposed to launch into space without any fuel by utilizing the mass shifting phenomena near light speed. Technically, the engine is stated to travel at the speed of light. This may work, but may contradict the rules of physics. However, the moment David Byrne's paper was published, it caused a massive uproar among the entire space community. Of course, things can go wrong. In fact, we still have a few years before this technology is fully developed. But when we look back in the past, we think this is a critical moment. Yes, it is a critical moment for the development of human spaceflight. Therefore, in many ways, if these plans are successful, Musk's Mars immigration plan may become a reality. Others argue that it will not necessarily defy the laws, but rather expand our understanding of the laws of physics. Are you excited about this? Well, we are, and we sure hope you should be too. According to Musk, this is all aimed at saving humanity from an unexpected catastrophe. But before you become too thrilled, bear in mind that there will always be challenges with anything amazing and new, especially anything that hasn't been done before. When it comes to the NASA helical engine, there are many things to consider. The bare minimum size of the machine to work would have to be 200 meters long and 12 meters wide, which would make it unsuitable for space travel. It would also have to be extremely powerful, requiring nearly 165 megawatts of power to generate a single neutron of thrust, which is a lot of effort. Simply put, it is an inefficient engine that would require a frictionless environment to reach any meaningful speeds. Still, if there was enough time and power, this machine could use Einstein's special relativity to reach near light speed. As of now, the helical engine is still just on paper, but it certainly opens up new avenues. Perhaps with enough resources and manpower, NASA could give this engine a serious try. We hope you learned something new about the light speed engine and its capabilities as a result of this information. However, we're still drooling with so much enthusiasm as we anticipate more amazing updates from the space industry and Elon Musk. What is the fastest speed the human body can withstand? What would happen to our bodies if we traveled at the speed of light? Remember to drop your comments below and let us know what you think about all this.